In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple 3D renderer step by step. The renderer will be capable of rendering any 3D vertex and rotating it along X and Y axis. This video will not be very technical, I will try my best to make this topic as simple as possible. I'll be using C++ and SDL library to handle window and drawing 2D lines, but you can follow along in any language you want. I actually made the same 3D renderer in Scratch back when we had online school and I had clearly too much free time so it's really pretty simple. The first problem that we have to tackle is how do we take a 3D object and smash it onto a 2D screen. The way we do that is via weak perspective projection. Now this perspective, despite its name, is pretty powerful. Basically, we can take a number called vocal length, or FOV, and use this formula to get projected X when given X and Z. We can do the same for Y. But how does this formula work? Alright, so to explain how this equation works, we have our camera and we have a dis some distance from this camera to the screen, which is called FOV in my code, or it can just be called focal length most people call it that, and we have this point that we want to render so we want to render it over here as the projections work so what we do is we can draw a cool triangle like that and this is x this is x this is the distance from our point to the camera in the x-axis this is z this is our fov this combined is of course FOV plus Z. This is our projected X, so the, the thing that we are looking for. And with that we have basically two triangles. And these triangles are basically similar, which means that they're just scaled versions of each other and the ratios of their sides are the same. So we can write this as an equation. So this equals X divided by FOV plus Z. We can multiply both sides by FOV to get PX equals X times FOV divided by FOV plus Z, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now this is cool, but there is no way to get that rotating effect with this. Fortunately, there is such thing called rotation matrix. Now this is some fancy math. You basically give it numbers x, y, z and multiply the matrices to get the rotated chords. Now I would do a video about how to multiply matrices, but I think it's beyond the scope of this video. If you want to learn that, I'm gonna link some resources down below. But basically we can just simplify this form to something a lot more codable. Uh, let's say so this will be actually x y cosine of theta uh, minus z sine of theta and z sine of theta ma plus cosine of theta and this is our final matrix now this can be done for every single of these rotation matrices and we'll just get the simplified form that we can put into our code and have that basically done. Alright, so we are in our code base and we first thing you see is we are using SDL which is the library that will help me basically draw to the window. It's not a 3D library so there's nothing helpful in that, we just draw to the window which is cool. And we have our, uh, included our uh, renderer. So first thing we do is define some points and vertices. Now basically what this means is uh, we have a point uh, at this coordinate, at this coordinate and so on. And we have a vertex between those. So we have between point 0 and point 1. Between point 2 and point 5. Point 5 is here by the way, but okay. Uh, so this is very cool because it allows us to get this done We can define some other things like thingy which is a terrible comment by the way uh, and pyramid 
but I decided to go with cube for this presentation. Uh, so, first things first, we define some window by using SDL. We call it 3D renderer, and we basically have this size. And it's pretty simple. You don't got to understand it. It's just creating a window and the renderer. Then we set running to true, and we have a loop while running. We also have this renderer where we pass our points and our vertices and we have that all set here. And if uh, we request quit, so we basically click this, we break the loop and say running is false. And then we just render. So let's actually go to our .h file of uh, renderer 3D. Here we define some structs that you might be might have been confused because I didn't explain them here. But we have uh, point 3D, which is basically just a point. Uh, there is point 2D, which is used to explain the screen space and vertex which has a start and the end uh, which basically uses these points as indexes then we have some private variables like rotation which is how rotated we are we have fov which is i explained it delta time which is just used to have the uh, in, uh, frame independent uh, timing and some window size because we want this to be centered and a renderer uh, and the actual renderer that we pass on the through and points and vertices let's go in here we first of all construct our class and then we measure time which is useful because we want basically frame independent timing uh, which basically means that we want to rotate once per second, for example, not once per 60 frames, because 60 frames may go in one second, may go in uh, 0 0.0 second, po point zero, yeah. point zero zero 0.001 second, so we don't want that. Uh, we uh, set the render color to zero and clear the window, so basically uh, set the window to black. We then switch to uh, white and rotate our cube a little bit, but uh, that's beside the point. Then we go through every vertex using this out of our loop and uh, we take its starting point uh, from points, rotate it, rotate it Y, rotate it X, and save the rotated point into a point 3D type. We do the same for endpoint, and then we convert them using projection function into point 2D, and do the same for the endpoint, and then we just draw the line. So let's actually go into projection function. Now this should look familiar if we actually delete these times 100. It's pretty familiar. Uh, this is just used so we can have this in the middle of the screen and this is used because we actually have negative one and we don't want this to be, be across one pixel we want it to be 100 pixels wide yeah, 200 actually and this is basically this function it's all what i've shown really rotate x is exactly what i've shown uh in, in the last paint explanation kind of thing it's exactly the same and uh, we do rotate y also which is you just gonna have to trust me that it works because well it does and and yeah that's the code so we can run it and it works flawlessly it's very nice cube that rotates it's very cool so yeah i would really appreciate if you could subscribe because this is my first video and uh yeah thanks for watching basically bye